what's up guys welcome to my youtube channel as always so i appreciate you guys for being here go ahead and if you haven't done so already click the link below to make sure that you subscribe and that you're keeping up with our episodes all right so look uh today i'm sitting in a different background than i normally am normally you guys catch me i'm on the move um having meetings things of that nature but today we're filming here in my home office where all of the big decisions is made and the money is made. <laughs> uh, but what I want to talk about today in this episode is my Facebook group that we have for our Salon Suite Master Course. So um, this group is just has truly been a blessing to our 509 students that are a part of this group. And so I want to talk about it a little bit more because some of the individuals that have purchased our course have not joined the group and aren't taking advantage of it. Um, and then we're actually about to open the group up for people who have not purchased the course, uh, but are just interested in salon suite knowledge. So maybe you're in the industry already. Um, you don't see a need for the course, but you do see a need for the actual community. So, um, and for those of you guys, the course that I'm talking about is our salon suite master course. You can head on over to www dot salon suite master course dot com for all of the details once again we also have our inner circle program those details can be found at dillard entrepreneur university dot com and then we have our one-on-one -on -one consulting program as well so i've got a six-month program and a 12-month program and that's more of a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program where i'm helping you every step of the way get your salon suite business off the ground so um, and individuals that sign up for that consulting program are also able to be a part of the inner circle as well and get advantage of our credit repair program, our business funding program, um, and the community that we have that is specific just to our inner circle students. Um, and then we have an annual dinner each year as well, which is generally the same weekend as our National Salon Suite Conference. So more information coming up about the conference, guys. The conference is actually going to be October 18th through the 20th of this year, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. You can get your early bird tickets now at nationalsalonsuitesconference.com. All right, but so let's get into it. So first of all, when you purchase the course, um, you get a email that invites you to actually join the Facebook group. Now with that email in, in um, ask, that asks you to join, um, it's going to ask you for some specific information as well, such as what email did you use to purchase the course um, and a few other questions just so that we know that you're supposed to be in this group. Okay. Um, it is a private group um, and we talk salon suite information on a day to day basis. All right, so this is what the group actually looks like right here on Facebook. Um, as I've mentioned, we've got a little bit over 500 members, so over 500 people that have actually purchased the course um, and that are members of our master course group. Here we've got, so all of the National Salon Suite Conference information, um, various events, you know, that may be coming up. Um, and so these are our featured posts, of course, that are up here. Um, you can actually chat with some of the other members as well. Um, and then, so one of the things that I want to do is just kind of go through a little bit of Q and a, some of the, um, questions, you know, that are asked in this Facebook group. One of the big benefits about the Facebook group is that it's not just me that's answering questions. Um, a lot of the students are very, very active in the group. Um, and a lot of times they get to the questions before I actually do. So we're going to kind of go through this a little bit because a lot of these questions are questions that some of you guys may have when it comes to the salon suite industry. And I think it can be very beneficial for you guys. All right. So, um, this one, and, and like I said, the group is pretty active. So we've got people posting every single day. Uh, we've got individuals that may be selling equipment or just talking about what's the best, best equipment to buy. We've got realtors in here that are listing available locations, all types of information in here that is very, very valuable to not only the process of getting open, but once you're actually open and running your business as well. This guy here, I don't want to butcher his name, <laughs> but um, he's a, he asked, hi, I'm applying for the cosmetology and barber license, but I'm not sure on which option to choose 
between the School of Cosmetology or School of Bartending? Can anyone please help out? Now, this is one of the things that we actually go over in the course. Um, and what he would choose is actually cosmetology salon. So, you know, he's not opening up a school um, for either one, not a school for barbering nor a school for um, cosmetology. So um, he wants to, he should be choosing to open up um, he should be choosing the, the, the choice that says cosmetology salon license. And so I'm going to comment on that here. I believe one of the students has already um, responded to him, but you know, I want to make sure that I respond as well, being that it's my group. <laughs> All right, so Marquila Sullivan, hey everyone, what type of flooring did you choose and why? So this is just a really good question uh, because a lot of times, uh, for example, my second location, I really did not know about this, but there was a floor that was already down. Um, so I did not change the flooring. I kept the floor that they already had and it was not a waterproof laminate and it actually, the floor actually got damaged because of course with salon suites, um, you've got a lot of hair washing and um, water that's being used. And so I ended up having to replace the floor. Um, it, now it wasn't a floor that I put in there, but, um, to Neil, and she's one of my students, she actually was one of the first people in the inner circle, but she responded and said waterproof lam laminate. Um, the backing was pretty thick and it was durable. I just wish I would have gotten a darker color. And those are things that you want to keep in mind. You know, when you've got a salon suite, it's high traffic. So, um, even for example, your wash bowls, you know, you don't want to get the white wash bowls. You want to get the black ones, you know, uh, when it comes to the shampoo chairs, um, you don't want to get anything that's really light, you know, keep in mind, um, you've got tenants that are going to be dyeing hair, um, and using color and that stuff can get everywhere. So <laughs> you want to make sure that you're getting things that are going to be durable and things that are going to be high traffic. All right. So Hannah, um, I believe she actually just got open and she's asking, so for suite owners, do you charge a four week or a two week security deposit? Very good question. Um, and, and this kind of varies, you know, with your community and where you are and your competition. Um, so Paulette, I'm very familiar with Paulette. Um, she actually opened up um, her salon suites not too long ago. The name of her, her company is This Is It Salon Suite. She says that she just charges one week. Um, Adria said the same thing. Um, you really don't want to hit them in the pocket too hard, you know, because not only are they paying the security deposit, but they're also paying that first week of rent as well. So um, most people, I've, I've never really known of anybody to charge more than two weeks, especially in this economy. So you don't, you want to make sure that you're not shooting yourself in the foot. All right. Um, and then just two days ago, Paulette Germany, she asked, for those who provide business resources and classes to your tenants, what kind are they? And are they free to the tenant? So this is a really good question. And most of these individuals are saying no, that they don't, you know, so great question. Following, um, this is actually Alexis Edge here is a new consulting client that I have. Um, she, they're just in the very beginning process of looking for their actual location. But she responded and said, I don't yet, but as a current tenant and future salon suite owner, I would do bookkeeping tax savings, mark, marketing and branding, SEO, social media, presence engagement on the business side. I would also send our tenant surveys and give them options to let them know what they need. There's so much you can offer. Personally, I would do a combination of complimentary classes, especially if it's no more than two hours and the options to attend workshops and master classes for a fee. Um, definitely very good feedback. One of the things that I used to do when I had more time on my hands, when I first got into the industry, uh, being that I am a business consultant and a coach, I would give my tenants um, a free uh, business consultation. So I literally would, would work with them one-on-one -on -one for an hour um, individually, you know, to um, give them, you know, tips on how to improve, you know, their small business. And they were really, really thankful for that. Um, unfortunately, with my current schedule, I'm not really able to do that as much as I used to, but you definitely want to provide your tenants with something, something different and something extra. All right, so we've got John Washington. He asks, I'm currently trying to get business funding, but it's not looking possible. I have some things on my credit that I need to clean up. I don't want to take equity out of my home. What do you guys feel about using cash for build out? Is it something you would do or not? 
So John may not be familiar with our inner circle program, but he would be a perfect candidate for it. Number one, you should never use your own cash to start your business. Um, he's saying that he needs to clean up his credit and also get some business funding. And those are things that we offer specifically in the inner circle. Um, like I said, we do the credit repair. Um, we help provide business funding. And then you also get to be a part of a community that's meeting on a bi-weekly basis. Um, and so that would definitely be a perfect option for John. And so we've got a um, calendar that, that I'm gonna drop in here later on. Um, and he can just set up a meeting with someone on my team and they'll talk to him a little bit more about the one-on-one -on -one inner circle program. All right, um, somebody is saying, hi, can someone recommend a reliable sprinkler company in, in Atlanta? I would greatly appreciate that. That's pretty much specific to her, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on that one. Um, let's see here. Uh, Shafan Stewart, she asks, hello everyone, I just finished the course and I'm confused on where I need to start. I've had my EIN, LLC, Dunn's number, and Net30 account for three, almost four years now. I have a layout of how I want my suites. I was also given a realtor that works with commercial property in Charlotte, North Carolina, which is where I want to open the suites at. How many rooms did y'all start with in your first suite? Was the rooms fully furnished or no? What were some pros and cons you all ran into? Help, please. All advice is greatly appreciated. Um, and so no one has really spawn, responded to her probably because the weekend has gone by. I'm pretty sure that, you know, she'll get some responses today. Uh, but, you know, she's saying, you know, she's confused on where to start. One of the things that I would ask her is, okay, you know, do you already have your funding? Do you already have the money that you need to get open? If not, that's basically where you want to start at. Then secondly, you know, if you have your realtor, then you want to start looking at actual properties. You know, um, she's somebody that may need to go back and review the course because in the course we talk about um, the amount of square footage that's needed. Um, we talk about, um, you know, about how many suites you can get based upon, you know, the square footage um, and how many suites you can get out of that and, and, and just how to set up your salon suite properly. Um, so a lot of times, you know, the course, the good thing about the course is that, you know, once you have your login, um, you know, you have the course for life, you know, so Shafan will, is able to go back and review, you know, all of this information that was in the course that she just <coughs> may have missed out on. Six days ago, Veronica Roanhouse, she asks, has anyone found success in doctor's offices? They have plumbing and in my neighborhood, the rooms are around. 10 by 10, who's had success? This lady said, me, I've had success, you know, doing a dental office. Um, and then, you know, she's asking her for a rough estimate of her build out. So just tons of knowledge that's in here. And Veronica is another one who may would benefit from going through the course again, because in the course I talk about how doctor's offices, dentist offices, those are some of the best um, to the best locations, you know, to use, because if you've got um, a location where it used to be a doctor's office or a dentist's office, you already have these separate rooms that are already kind of built out. And a lot of them do have plumbing already. So um, it's just, it's definitely going to save you some money when it comes to your build out and it's going to jumpstart your way to success. All right. So I'm going to just go over a couple more of these, but um, like I said, the Salon Suite Master Course Facebook group is uh, just definitely a pretty dope community. As you see, People are very active in here. Um, and we're also gonna be opening it up for anybody else that may want to be in the group that has not purchased the, purchased the course. Um, you can actually go over to courses.whoissnoop.com um, and that's a hundred bucks a month um, is what you would pay um, to be a part of the Facebook group. So also here, this is one of our realtors um, who posts in the group pretty often. Um, this is a location that she's found that she thinks would be great, you know, for salon suite. She said that they're, they're, the landlord provides $40 per square foot for TI to help with the build out. So this is what that means, right? And a lot of people are already, always asking me, what is TI? So TI is tenant improvement money. So if they're going to provide $40 per square foot and there's a total of 5,881 square feet, Let's see how much money this landlord has decided that, that they're going to give. That's two hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars. Two thirty-five, two forty. You know, two hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. 
that they're going to give just to help with the build out. So, you know, definitely um, a great opportunity. Now, this location is ready for delivery in gray shell condition. And what that means is that it's pretty much an empty shell. OK, all of the walls are gray. Um, there's no plumbing. There's nothing in there. But the landlord basically is giving you enough money for the full, complete build out and some. Um, so this may be a great deal for somebody. You know, it looks like it's in a nice plaza uh, with tons of parking. And so that's one of the benefits of being in this Facebook group is that we have realtors that are dropping deals in here every day. And most of the deals that Stephanie drops in here um, are deals that come with tenant improvement money. You know, all my students, if they're not going to get free rent um, or, you know, or, or some type of tenant improvement money, I would pass up on it, especially in this economy. Landlords are very competitive when it comes to that. And so, you know, you definitely want to make sure that you're getting, you know, the most bang for your buck. All right. So this is the last one. Um, John Washington, he said, what do you guys think about this estimate? Is there anything that seems too much? Has anyone paid this for a build out? I, remo I remember Snoop saying the most she paid was 110,000. But was that including chairs, mirrors, et cetera, or just for build out? So when I mentioned this, it was just for build out. It, it did not include the furniture. So I've actually responded to this guy. Um, I thought that this was a pretty decent estimate. And again, that's another benefit for being in this group because this is showing you exactly how much this stuff costs. You know, the demo, the framing, the drywall, flooring, painting, electrical, et cetera. You know, so um, I mean, that's this is one of the main questions that everybody asks is, you know, how much should I be paying for this stuff and what does it cost to build out a salon suite? So um, you definitely get, you know, your bang for your buck, you know, in this <clears throat> in this Facebook community. I mean, there's so much information. I mean, there's 15 comments on here. So people are just commenting and talk about, you know, what they pay for the full build out, where they're located. Um, who's some of the contractors that they use. And another thing for me, my numbers that I mentioned, I filmed this course uh, two to three years ago. And so of course, guys, you know, we do have inflation <laughs> as well. So um, something I paid $110,000 could easily be 130, you know, or 135,000, you know, this day and age. So, um, but again, you know, if you, if you feel like you would find this type of information beneficial, please head on over to courses.whoissnoop.com um, and I'll see you in the Facebook group. <laughs>